Today I'm reading The Case for Bayesian Deep Learning. It's from Andrew Gordon Wilson. Um, the paper is well described by the title. Abstract is, the key distinguishing property of Bayesian approach is marginalization instead of optimization, not the prior or the bias rule. Bayesian inference is especially compelling for deep neural networks. First, the neural networks are typically under, underspecified by the data and can represent many different but high performing models corresponding to the different settings of the parameters, which is exactly when marginalization will make the biggest difference for both calibration and accuracy. Two, deep ensembles have been mistaken as competing approaches to Bayesian methods, but can be seen as approximate Bayesian marginalization. Three, the structure of neural networks give rise to a structured prior in function space, which reflects the inductive biases of neural networks that help them generalize. Four, the observed co correlation between the parameters in inflated regions of loss and diversity of solutions that provide good generalization is further conductive to Bayesian marginalization. As flat regions occupy a large volume in a high dimensional space and each different solution will make a good contribution to model average. Five, the recent practical advances for Bayesian deep learning provide improvements in accuracy and calibration to compare the standard training while retaining scalability. That is the end of the abstract. So let me just uh, read it once more. So they are typically underspecified and so the goal is to do marginalization across the different models. Deep ensembles have been mistaken as a competing to Bayesian methods, but they are only approximation. Structure of neural network gives rise to structured prior space to help them generalize. All right, let's continue. In many situations, the predictive distributions we want to compute is given by uh, probability of uh, label Y uh, conditioned on uh, data point X and the input data equals to uh, integral of uh, probability of label Y conditioned on data point X and uh, weights of the neural network times probability of weights uh, conditioned on the input data integrated by the weights of the possible weights of the network. The outputs wise, uh, for example, class labels, regression values, indexed by inputs, for example, images, spatial location. The weights or parameters of the model are W and D are the data. Equation 1 represents Bayesian model average, BMA, rather than bet everything on one hypothesis with a single setting of parameters W. We want to use every possible setting of settings of the parameters weighted by their posterior probabilities. This process is called marginalization of the parameters W, since the predictive distribution of the interest is no, long, no longer conditioned on W. This is not conditional. Uh, controversial equation, but a direct expression of the sum and product rules of probability. The BMI represents a epistemic uncertainty. That is uh, uncertainty over which settings of weights hypothesis is correct given limited data. Epistemic uncertainty is sometimes referred to as model uncertainty in contrast to aleatoric uncertainty coming from a noise in the measurement process. One can naturally visualize epistemic uncertainty in regression by looking at the spread of the predictive distribution as we move in the space uh, x in the x space. As we move away from the data, there are many m more functions that are consistent with our observations, and so our epistemic uncertainty should grow. In classical training, we typically find the regularized maximum likelihood solution. Uh, this procedure is sometimes called maximum a posteriori optimization, as it, is, it involves maximizing a posterior. Uh, logarithm of probability of data conditioned on input weights is the log likelihood formed by relating the function that we want to learn, f of uh, input and uh, weights, to our observation.
if we are performing classification with submax links link function minus log p as a function of data conditioned on weights corresponds to the cross entropy loss. If we are performing regression with Gaussian noise, such as uh, pr probability of uh, data conditioned on W uh, equals uh, multiplication of probabilities, uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to skip this. It's called uh, means, scaled mean square error loss. In this context, the prior uh, P of W X as a regularizer. If we choose a flight prior uh, which has no preference for any settings of parameters W, it does not assign any feasible setting anymore prior density than the other, then it will have no effect on the optimization solution. On the other hand, a flat prior may have a major, major effect on marginalization. Indeed, even though MAP involves a posterior, posterior and a prior, an instantiation of a Bayes rule it is not at all Bayesian since it is performing optimization to bet everything on a single hypothesis. Beacon view classical training as performing approximate Bayesian inference using the approximate posterior where uh, probability of uh, weights conditioned on the data are equal to the Kronecker uh, or uh, Dirac, Dirac delta function where we have some fixed uh, weights where uh, delta is a direct function that is zero ev everywhere except at the w. In this case, we recover standard predictive distribution. From this perspective, many alternatives are bait imperfect, will be preferable, including impoverished Gaussian posterior approximation for the uh, probability of, of weights conditioned on data, even if the posterior or likelihood are actually highly non-Gaussian and multimodal. The difference between a classical and Bayesian approach will depend on how sharply peaked posterior peak becomes. If the posterior is sharply peaked, then there may, may be almost no difference, since the points of the mass may then be a reasonable approximation of the posterior. However, deep neural networks are typically very underspecified by the data available and will thus have diffuse likelihoods. Not only are the likelihoods diffused, but the different settings of the parameters correspond to a diversity variety of a compelling explanations for the data. Indeed, Garipov 2018 shows that there are large valleys in the loss landscape of neural networks on, over which parameters in, incur very little loss, but give rise to high performing functions which make meaningfully different predictions on the test data. Zona 2019 and Ismailov 2019 also demonstrate variety of the good solutions that can be expressed by a neural network posterior. This is exactly the settings where when we most want to perform Bayesian model average, which will lead to ensemble containing many different but high performing models for better accuracy and better calibration than the classical training. The recent studies of deep ensembles uh, in 2017 uh, are not discouraging, but instead a strong motivation for following Bayesian approach. Deep ensembles involve MAP training of the same architecture many times, starting from different initialization to find different local optima. Thus, using these models with an ensemble is approximate model uh, Bayesian model average. Uh, with weights uh, that uh, correspond to model with high uh, likelihood and diverse predictions. Instead of using single point mass to approximate our posterior, as with the classical training, we are now using multiple point masses in good locations, enabling a better approximation to the integer, uh, integral uh, in equation one that we are trying to solve. The functional diversity is important for a good approximation to the BMA integral because we are summing together terms of the form uh, probability of uh, labels uh, conditioned on X and W. If two settings of the weights and the W each provide high likelihood and consequently high posterior density, 
but give rise to similar models, then they will be largely redundant in the model average, and the second settings parameter will not contribute much to the integral estimate. Deep ensemble weights can be used as samples from approximate posterior, uh, 2019. But in the context of deep ensembles, it is best to think of the MBA integral separately from the simple Monte Carlo approximation that is often used to approximate this integral. To compute an accurate predictive distribution, we do not need to sample from a posterior or even faithful approximation to the posterior. We, we need to evaluate the posterior in places that will make the greatest contribution to the integral. While a recent report in 2019 shows that the deep ensembles appear to outperform some particular approaches to Bayesian neural networks, there are two key reasons behind these results that are actually optimistic for Bayesian approaches. First, deep ensembles being used, used are finding many different basins of attraction corresponding to diverse solutions, which enables a better approximation to Bayesian model average than the specific Bayesian models considered in 2019, which focus their modeling effort on a single Bayesian of attraction. The second is that deep ensembles require a training network from a scratch many times, which incurs great computational expense. If one were to control for computation, the approaches which focus on single Bayesian may be preferred. There is important distinction between a Bayes model average and some approaches to ensembling. Bayesian model average assumes that one hypothesis or setting of the weights is correct and that the averages of the models due to inability to distinguish between the hypothesis given limited data. As we observe more data, the posterior collapses and the Bayesian model average converges to the maximum likelihood solution. If true explanation for the data is actually a combination of hypotheses, the Bayesian model average may then perform worse as we observe more data. Some ensembling methods instead work by enriching the hypothesis space, thus do not collapse in this way. Deep ensembles, however, are finding different MAB or maximum likelihood solutions corresponding to the different basins of attractions starting from different random initializations. Therefore, the deep ensemble will collapse when the posterior concentrates, as with the Bayesian model average. Since the hypothesis space is highly expressive for a modern neural network, posterior collapse may, many cases, in many cases is desirable. Regarding the priors, the prior that matters in, in the prior function space, not the parameter space. The prior that matters is the prior in the function space, not the parameter space. In the case of the Gaussian process, a vague prior would be disastrous, as it is a prior directly in a function space and would correspond to white noise. However, when we combine vague prior over parameters with a structured function form, uh, such as convolutional neural network, we un induce a structured prior distribution over functions. Indeed, inductive biases and equivariance constraints in such models is why they work well in classical setting. We can sample from the introduced prior over functions by first sampling parameters from PW and then conditioning on these parameters uh, in uh, function X and W to form sample uh, from, uh, okay, okay. Alternatively, we can use a neural network kernel with a Gaussian process to induce a structural distribution over functions. Bison or not, the prior just like the functional form of a model or likelihood will certainly be un imperfect and making unassailable assumptions will be impossible. And making unassailable assumptions will be impossible. Attempting to avoid an important part of the model process because one uh, has to take uh, assumptions, has to make assumptions. However, it will be often worse alternative than imperfect assumption. There are many considerations one might have in selecting prior. Sometimes consideration is invariance under reparameterization. Parameterization invariance is also a question in considering regularizers 
optimization procedures and model specification and so on. And it is not specific to whether or not one should follow Bayesian approach. Nonetheless, we will make some brief additional remarks on those questions. If we truly have a vague prior over parameters, perhaps subject to some constraint for normalization, then our posterior reflects essentially the same relative preferences between the models as our likelihood. For it is a likelihood scaled by a factor that does not depend on W outside some basic constraint. In computing the integral for Bayesian model average, each setting of a parameter is weighted by the quality of associated function as measured by the likelihood. Thus model average is happening in function space and it is in invariant parameterization. In the context of many standard architectural specifications, there are also some additional benefits to using relatively broad zero mean centered Gaussian priors, which help to provide smoothness in the function space by bounding the norm of the weights. But uh, this smoothness is not a central reason to follow Bayesian approach, as one could realize similar disadvantages in performing MAP optimization. The Bayesian methods are fundamentally about marginalization as an alternative to optimization. Moreover, vague priors over parameters are also often reasonable description of our priori subjective beliefs. We want to use a given functional form, which is no, by no means vague, but we often do not have any strong priori preference to setting of the parameters. This is often worth reiterating. A vague prior, prior in the parameter space, combined with a higher structured model as a conversion neural network, does not imply a vague prior in a function space, which is also why classical training of neural networks provides good results. Indeed, a vague parameter priors are often preferable to entirely ignoring epistemic uncertainty, which would be the standard alternative. In fact, ignoring the epistemic uncertainty is a key reason that the standard neural network training is miscalibrated by er erroneously assuming that the model, uh, that the model parameter setting we want to use is completely de determined by a finite set that the predictive distribution become overconfident. For example, the highest of max output of a CNN that has undergone standard training, MAP optimization, would be typically much higher than the probability of the corresponding class label, 2017. Importantly, ignoring epistemic uncertainty also leads to worse accuracy uh, in point predictions because we are now ignoring all other competing explanations for the data. While improvements in the calibration are an empirically recognized benefit of the Bayesian approach, the enormous potential for gains in accuracy is uh, through Bayesian marginalizing with neural network is a larger over advantage. <coughs> there are also many examples where flat priors or parameters combined with marginalization sidestep pathologies of a maximum likelihood training. Uh, priors without marginalizations are simply regularizations. Um, but Bayesian methods are not about regularizations. Uh, there is a large body of work considering approximate Bayesian methods with unformative priors over parameters, but not functions. This approach is well motivated, marginalization is still compelling and the earth results are often better than the regularized optimization. The ability for neural network to fit many datasets, including images with random labels, is indicative of their support rather than their, in, rather than their inductive biases. We want to have a large support because we believe that they, a priori that there are many possible explanations for a given problem even if a large fraction of these explanations are a priori improbable. The distribution of this support, which solutions are a priori probable, is determined by inductive biases of the model. Gaussian processes with popular kernels are capable of expressing large support with near universal approximation properties, but at the same time, very simple inductive biases. A Gaussian process can also perfectly fit the noise, but favors more structured solutions.
Similarly, a vague distribution over parameters in neural network induces a distribution over functions that has support for many solutions, as we would hope. But neural networks have been constructed not just for flexibility, but to have uh, inductive biases such that the mass of the good solutions would be reasonably would reasonably exceed the mass of bad solutions for the problems that neural networks are typically applied to. Indeed, flexibility, aka support, can be achieved purely few width, but depth is what has led to the greatest improvements in the generalization. Moreover, it has been observed that the solutions in the flat regions of the lost surface correspond to better generalization. Although flatness can be achieved through reparametrization, the flatness that is associated with a good generalization is when parameters in the flat regions correspond to the high performing models. In high dimensional space, these solutions in the flat regions will take up much more volume in, than bad solutions. Even if they have same values of, uh, of the loss, which is partly why they are easily discoverable by optimization procedures. This, is, uh, this observation further motivates the Bayesian approach to deep learning. Why a focus on integration rather than optimization? The high volume solutions that provide a good generalization are associated with, high, with functional diversity, avoiding redundancy in the model average will have a much greater effect on the predictive distribution than the sharper solutions. Indeed, by accounting for epistemic uncertainty through uninformative parameter, but not function, priors, as we uh, as a community have developed based on deep learning methods with improved calibration, reliable distributions and improved accuracy. Uh, McKay, uh, particle by noticeable works considering beds and inference for neural networks. Seeger 2006 also provides a clear tutorial on beds and methods in machine learning. Of course, we can also make uh, um, better assumptions by then or not. We should strive to build more interpretable parameter price. There are works that consider building more informative parameters prior for neural networks by reasoning in function space. And we should also build better posterior approximations. Deep ensembles are a promising step in this direction. But we should not undermine the progress we are making so far. Bias and informants in France is especially compelling for deep neural networks. Bias and deep learning is gaining visibility because we are making progress with a good, increasing, scalable, practical solutions. We should not discourage these efforts. If we are shying away from approximate Bayesian and approach because of some challenge or imperfection, we should always ask, what is the alternative? The alternative may indeed be more impoverished representation of the predictive distribution we want to compute. There are certainly many challenges to computing the integral of in equation one for modern neural networks, including a posterior landscape which is difficult to navigate and an enormously high, for example, 30 million dimensional parameter space. Many of the papers above are working towards addressing such challenges. Have been particularly working on recycling geometric information in the SGD trajectory for scalable approximate Bayesian inference. 2019, exploiting large loss valleys, 2018, and creating subspaces of low dimensionality that capture much of the variability of the network. Uh, in 2018 also considers different approaches to dimensionality reduction based on linear transformations. For exploring multiple distinct basins of attraction, we have been developing a cyclical stochastic uh, Mark, uh, Monte Carlo Markov chains approaches which could be seen as sharing many of the advantages of the deep ensembles, but with an added attempt to also marginalize within basins of attraction. So that's the whole paper. I hope you liked it. If you have, uh, please, if you have any suggestions, please leave them below if you are still listening and maybe see you next time.